Hello all you spooky people out there and welcome to my channel. Um, so this is going to be the first in a series that I like to call Murder Tea. So this is where we sip tea and spill the tea on different murder cases. Um, a few sort of disclaimers and things before we begin. Uh, first, I have two small dogs and a cat, so if you hear any jingling in the background or see anything going on behind me, it's probably one of them. Um, the, the cat has a collar that has a bell on it, and it's so cute. But, a little distracting to the video. I'll try to cut those uh, bits out if I can. I've watched enough of these true crime videos to know that there will be a lot of allegedly's and supposedly's just because people will sue if you give them even the slightest chance. So let's not. Um, also, 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 um, I will be swearing like a sailor as I normally do in my everyday life. So if you have a problem with that, well, I mean, you clicked on a video that's about gruesome murders. So you probably shouldn't be offended by me saying the word fuck if you're looking up things that are horrifying. But anyway, um, so I will be, um, trying my best to pronounce things. I won't be accurate all of the time. In fact, I probably won't be accurate most of the time. Um, but that's just how it is. I mean, we can't all be great at pronouncing things from every single language in the world. I try, and I've uh, tried to get my partner to kind of help me out with some pronunciation sometimes, just because he's really great at that kind of thing, and I'm definitely not. Um, so, don't say shit about my pronunciations. I know they're probably god-awful. It's fine. It's whatever. I will also be making it very clear when I'm introducing my own opinions versus the facts of the case, um, versus opinions of those involved in the case, and so on and so forth, I'll make sure that all of that is very clear so that there's no, um, there's no miscommunications here about whose theories are whose, um, and things like that, but I will be adding my own uh, commentary <laughs> throughout listing the facts of the cases and um, give my own spiel afterwards. All right, and that is all we have for that's all we have for cleanup today. To get us started, right now I am sipping a nice hot peppermint tea because it's finally cold outside and I'm so excited to have hot tea and not be burning up because of it um and this one's just straight peppermint with a little bit of honey just for my allergies because season change allergies happen all the time mmm good so I'm gonna sit this over here so that my cat doesn't get to it and knock it all over my electronics. Today, we will be talking about the female Dracula, or Lady Dracula, also known as the Blood Countess, Elizabeth Battery. Elizabeth Battery was born into a very wealthy and a well-respected family in Transylvania, which at the time was part of Hungary. Um, 
So her family was just full of these um, really important people in society, um, including things like her uncle was the king of Poland. Um, she had a nephew that was prince of Transylvania. Um, she had a lot of other close relations that are um, very notable. She was born a noblewoman, so so she herself had a lot of um, control over things in Transylvania. And um, her family was actually known to be quite cruel to the peasants. So when talking about the story of Elizabeth, it's kind of easy to see where she got um, her cruelty from if these rumors are true that her family was so, like, just so ridiculously brutal. And, by the way, I'm really sorry for the glare on my glasses, but I need to keep my glasses on in order to uh, read my notes, so... Sorry. Um, anyway, so the thing about royals back in the day, and we're talking about Elizabeth was born in 1560, so this is like 16th century, and you know, back then, nobles and royals, they were kind of like some wizards in the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Um, I'm a huge nerd, so I will reference things like that often. Um, but anyway, so some wizards in that are pure blood elitists, and back in the day, royals and nobles had that same idea to keep that nice, pure royal, um, superior blood in the family, you know? You don't want to mingle with anybody that's below your blood status. How dare you? Um, but that being said, that means that the families were very, very inbred, um, especially as time went on. And Elizabeth's parents were actually first cousins, which... Sounds extremely disgusting nowadays, but back then that was kind of normal. Anyway, so Elizabeth was born August 7th, 1560. Um, and she actually had a lot of different health problems as a child, which I completely relate to. I still have various health problems, but that's... The that's another story. Anyway, so as a child, Elizabeth would have um, these fits. Now they believe that those fits were violent seizures and that she was epileptic. But at the time, they were kind of unsure because the, just the um, science wasn't quite there yet. As I said before, her family was known to be quite cruel. Um, and with that, she witnessed a lot of harsh punishments, um, I guess you could say. Uh, while she was a child, there is even a story of her laughing when she watched a man who was accused of stealing be sewn onto a horse. I'm not kidding. Like, they actually, like, like I guess they, they used, like, needle and thread and were just like, we're just gonna sew you up here, buddy. And I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't exactly like that, but that's how it sounds. And the mental image that I got from that was really weird. But apparently she laughed at that, um, which is kind of telling. Anyway, she, since she was a noblewoman, she was very, very highly educated. She actually was 
quite highly educated even for a noble woman of that time. She knew quite a few different languages. I saw some sources say she knew about five languages, but I mean by the time she was 10 years old she was already well known for not only her beauty but how smart she was and how educated she was because it just wasn't a thing that happened very much even amongst noble women um they didn't have too much education back then really so at about the age of 11 elizabeth was engaged and um at the age of 15 they got married so her fiance and later husband was named count Ferenc Nodasti. Um, I'm really sorry for that. I'm just gonna call him the Count from now on. So we're not gonna relive that horrible pronunciation again. I'm not even gonna try that again. <laughs> I promise. Anyway, so yeah, at the age of 15, she married this guy who was a count. Um, she actually was a little bit higher ranking than him as far as like their family's uh, status and power goes. So she got to keep her last name, which was pretty cool. Not very common back then. Um, and some sources say that he did add her name her last name onto his so he just kind of slapped battery onto his name and there you go but there is one story that Elizabeth allegedly had an affair with a, a just a common man and that affair led to a child according to this story the child was given away in secret, you know, just kind of push him away, just wash your hands of it, everything's good. But then the Count found out, um, the Count that is, that was about to be her husband, this was right before the wedding, um, right before the marriage, rather. But then the Count found out, and apparently he had... The man who knocked up his fiance, castrated, and thrown to wild dogs. Now I know people get jealous, and I know that there's, I mean, I understand, you know, you got cheated on, you're not happy about that. But really, first off, the person that they were cheating with is not the only person involved in this, okay? Don't, don't throw all of your energy at that person because the other person's, you know, the other person's more responsible for it, um, in my opinion. But, also, that's just so much. Like, I know that back then, it was pretty common to be just downright awful to peasants and to be cruel. But, god damn, did you really have to castrate him and then throw him to wild dogs? Like, you couldn't have just been like, I hate you and slit his throat or, or, you know, suck your sword through him or something. No, no, you had to castrate him and then let him be eaten alive. What the fuck? I can't even, anyway, anyway, we're continuing because I don't know how to get past that anyway. Um, but that is just one story, so, you know, we don't know if it's true or not, uh, this case being as old as it is, it's hard to 
know for sure. It's almost impossible to know if any of this is even real. But I don't care. So when Elizabeth and the Count got married, they moved to this castle. According to some sources, it was a wedding gift to Elizabeth from the Count. Um, according to other sources, it was a wedding gift to the couple from the Count's family. So either way, it was a wedding gift. I mean, it's kind of cool. Like, oh, you're getting married. Here, have a fucking castle. At the time of their marriage, they actually didn't get to spend too much time um, with each other at the beginning because her husband was actually um, often off fighting in the wars with the Ottoman Turks, which was a whole thing. It was constant warring kind of off and on. Some sources that I've read did state that he had a sort of reputation for cruelty almost um and uh, some believe that he may have actually taught elizabeth some more methods of torture because you know apparently she didn't already know enough from her horrible horrible family who used to torture their servants often all right so actually, kind of interesting, I found out, at least according to some sources, not all of them, but apparently the Count allegedly built a torture chamber for Elizabeth. Like, as a gift, I guess. I mean, I guess that's what every girl wants, right? How could you, you know, screw, screw getting me candies and, and flowers and, and whatnot and just give me a torture chamber so I can torture some servants before I kill them. Yep, he did that. Yeah, so allegedly he built, built her a torture chamber. Think of that how you will. Um, but eventually the Count died. Um, the Count actually died in January of 1604. So kind of sad. And um, Elizabeth actually got control of all of their, um, like their properties and estates and whatever the hell else they had. Basically she got everything when he died. Um, but the thing is, apparently they really liked each other, um, possibly loved each other, um, or at least respected each other. I mean, if the story of the torture chamber is true, then I mean, you don't give a girl a torture chamber without loving her first. But I digress. But the thing is that, um, Elizabeth's, you know, murderous and horrible ways actually got worse after her husband died. Some say that, you know, maybe it's because uh, she no longer had to worry about his reputation and keeping his reputation clean and all that good stuff. Um, Maybe she just kind of spiraled out of control without him. Or maybe they were both, they were both batshit crazy and they both were torturing people like some sources um, claim. And if they were torturing people together, maybe after he died, she was just like, well... I guess he's gone now. I guess I'll have to murder for both of us. But seriously, bitch is crazy. So, moving on to the victim's portion of the story. And this just gets even crazier as it goes on. I promise you, it's a lot. But I've tried to kind of condense it for you so it's not quite as bad. All of Elizabeth's victims were actually female, 
which is interesting. She said to have been torturing and killing young peasant girls. Um, and at the time, the local peasants would have to send their younger family members to houses of nobles and royals, sort of like paying their dues, I guess you could say, but they had to. They were bound by law. And um, if, you know, if a young woman was selected to be working for Elizabeth, it was considered a very high honor. But the thing is, they started not coming back home afterwards. So whenever their time was up, they just never left the castle again. And nobody really knew. But the thing is, nobody cared. Absolutely nobody in government gave a shit about these people. They did not care that Elizabeth was allegedly torturing and murdering young women. They didn't care. It didn't even cross their minds to care. Take from that what you will. So, now let's talk about the fun, gruesome parts. I say fun, but it's bad. There is one story that Elizabeth actually tortured. Okay. Elizabeth allegedly um, would strip her victims, have them covered in honey, and have them tied up outside. Needless to say, this was so that various insects could feast on them while they were alive. And this wouldn't even be the cause of death. This was just torture. This was just for fun. This is what she did for kicks. But anyway, this is another one of the most famous alleged ways that she used to torture and kill victims is she would force some of her servant girls to go outside for an ice bath. An ice bath is essentially where somebody goes outside completely naked and then basically just doused with cold water until they literally freeze to death. They would literally freeze these girls to death. This is in, in Europe. You gotta remember, this is cold temperatures. It's, it's snowing like hell. And they're walking out here butt-ass naked just to get some cold-ass water thrown on them that probably froze the instant they touch it. I'm surprised that water didn't freeze before it even got to the servants. Like, like halfway out the bucket, it just freeze in midair. Like, I feel like that's what would happen. But apparently not. Apparently this is a way of torturing people and killing them that I never really thought of before I looked into this case even more than I already had known. So that's interesting. Uh, there are claims that Elizabeth would drive needles into her victim's fingers. Drive needles into their fingers. What the fuck? She also allegedly would um, cut their noses and lips and other various body parts for some reason. I'm not exactly sure what the point of that one is. She would whip them with stinging nettles. So, fucking ouch. She would bite. Yes, bite. Their shoulders and breasts. Ow, not cool. We're not done here. We're not even close. She would also burn the flesh of some of her victims using various things like hot irons, hot coins, hot keys, basically 
anything that they could find that was metal, they would just heat it up and be like, Hmm, smells like bacon. But really, that's, ugh. Some of her victims were allegedly beaten to death. I'm not sure if specifically by her or if just by her orders. Not sure about that one. Probably by her. And then some were starved to death. Most likely all of them were starved, but, you know, some of them were starved to death. The most famous thing about this case, which is that Elizabeth would allegedly bathe in the blood of her victims, or drink the blood of her victims, depending on your version, that is actually false. Most likely, allegedly, because that story only came about about maybe a hundred years, a whole century after this shit happened. So most likely, either it had literally not surfaced until then somehow, maybe because of her status or something, I don't fucking know, but I'm thinking probably not true. Although, does make for an interesting story. So, that's what we know about her crimes, um, or rather her alleged crimes. Damn, that's good tea. On December 29th, 1610, I am not even going to attempt to pronounce this name. I am sorry. But, um, this is another count that some people say was Elizabeth's cousin. We'll just call him Count Two. Count Two actually, um, arrived at Elizabeth's place because he was investigating rumors of her cruelty and her alleged crimes against young noblewomen. Now, I don't think I need to tell you, again, that this government, and pretty much all others at the time, gave no fucks about anybody who wasn't nobility. They gave absolutely no fucks. Never mind all the servants that she had allegedly tortured and murdered. No, no, no. That's fine. That's fine. Nobody cares about that shit. Oh, they were just servants. Allegedly, a few young noble women were sent to Elizabeth's house to learn manners and things like that. Basically, how to be an adult noble woman. Um, because, you know, they didn't have a whole lot to really do back then so there wasn't much else to teach them but manners and maybe event planning I don't know anyway so these young noble women allegedly were sent to Elizabeth's house to learn manners and such and never returned and I don't know how I feel about this accusation I'm not sure if Elizabeth would have gone after nobles because think about it from a serial killer standpoint. What you want to do is torture and kill. What you can get away with and nobody would bat an eye. They could literally watch you do it and not care is torturing and killing servants and peasants. I mean, as long as they're yours, you know, you can't go off and kill somebody else's peasant. How dare you? That's their property. But it's just awful. It was awful. Horrible. Anybody who wasn't nobility or royalty was just nothing. Nothing. They were just enslaved or indentured servants of whatever sort, whatever label you want to give it. It's always been a thing. It always, it was always there in history. And 
unfortunately, that's just how it was. Nobody cared. But Homegirl started going after Nobility, allegedly. So, that means that she probably fucked up. No, she didn't probably fucked up. She did fuck up. She royally fucked up. Because once somebody of noble birth goes missing, shit hits the fan. The whole world is turned upside down. But, some little peasants, nobody cares about them. Peasants will have ten other kids. It's fine. There's like a million peasants, right? Doesn't matter about the individuals. Or at least, that's kind of how they saw it back then. I personally think it's a load of bullshit, but what do I know? God, that's good. Anyway, when Count Two arrived, according to some sources, he actually walked in basically seeing Elizabeth torture somebody and was like, okay, we're, we're shutting this shit down. So basically, she was on lockdown. She was not imprisoned. She was not given a trial because she was noble. And she basically controlled Transylvania at the time. And how dare they try to make her face justice. Anyway, so she wasn't jailed, wasn't actually imprisoned. It was more like, okay... So, we gotta keep you away from other people, because if we don't, we'll look bad, but also, you're fucking crazy. So, what they did, instead of throwing her in jail, or whatever, is basically they were like, Oh, nice castle. You know, you can stay here. Yeah, you can stay in your castle, just don't leave. Don't leave. But you can stay in your castle. You can stay home. It's only... I mean, a lot of us are dealing with that right now. <laughs> um, so, I guess, relatable. But, that's not a punishment. I mean, there are some sources that say that she was, like, confined to a basement or a room with the windows all barred up or whatever the shit. I don't believe it. They were probably just like, okay, so you're going to stay in your house. We're just going to add some extra guards to make sure that you don't leave. And, you know, you can't have all these servants, man. Maybe a cook. Oh, oh, you need somebody to bathe you too? Okay. Oh, you need lawn? Okay. Oh, what else did you need? No, fuck you. After she was caught, and Elizabeth, being Elizabeth, was just kind of, like, locked in her room, like a child that's misbehaving, a few of her servants were actually not so lucky, and let me take a sip before I tell you about that. Mmm, so fucking good! Anyway, four of Elizabeth's servants were arrested and questioned. When I say questioned, I mean tortured. Because back then, that's how they got answers. Doesn't matter if they were true or not, just as long as you said what they wanted you to say, they would stop torturing you. Maybe. I don't know. Depends on how they feel after your confession, you know? They might not think it's enough. They might have had a bad day and want to continue torturing you. <laughs> anyway, so, these four servants were three females, one male, and when they were tortured into confession, they actually agreed that they were not involved in the murders themselves. However, they admitted to burying the corpses of Elizabeth's victims. So basically, it was just like, Did you help kill these people? No, but I did. 
did bury some of the bodies. So she did kill them. Oh, God, that was awful. Anyway, I might completely edit that out. So, these servants, um, there are various sources saying that they buried anywhere between 36 and 51 bodies. Between 36 and 51. Now, it sounds like a lot. However, given the accusations against her, and the amount of time she had, she probably had a lot more bodies than just 51. But that's just my opinion. Allegedly. If she had any bodies. Three out of four of the servants that were arrested actually were sentenced to immediate execu execution. However, for the last one, for some reason, that one was delayed a little bit. That was one of the uh, three females, and I'm not entirely sure why. It just, a lot of sources have said that there was a delay in hers, so maybe she was helping the authorities out a little bit more than the others, or I don't know. Maybe she had something else going on. Fuck if I know. Now, that fourth servant, though, some sources say that she was executed. She just had a delayed execution. But some sources say that there is no record of her afterwards. Now, I would say that she would have had to pull some serious strings in order to get out of that shit. Which is possible. It's possible. Don't get me wrong. It's completely possible. Not very likely, but that's just my opinion. Anyway, there is actually a woman who allegedly used magic to help Elizabeth. That was something that was thrown in there. Of course, when things like this happen, there's always somebody that was like, I saw them using magic! No. Witches aren't that stupid! Anyway, there were actually... A lot of people that came forward and spoke to Count Two about these allegations. And there were 289 so-called witness statements. You'll understand why I said that in a moment. But the thing is, there's a lot of different stories here. So bear with me. So there is actually one story that Elizabeth had a list written down. 650 victims. Now, like I said earlier, the victim count was probably higher than 51, in my opinion, if this was true. But I think that the 650 is a more realistic number, given the fact that she was an adult by the time that she was... Um, supposedly arrested and when she was she had already been torturing and killing allegedly for a long time all right so one person actually said that elizabeth um had written down somewhere um i think in a notebook or something that she had 650 victims and by that, I mean she wrote down their names, allegedly. I think that it's not very likely that she would know the names of all 650 of her victims. I highly doubt that she would have cared enough to learn their names. So she probably only knew the names of, like, her closest few servants. Just because that's usually how it goes with nobles, allegedly. But, you know, despite... Whatever anybody said, Elizabeth actually was allowed to live out her life. She wasn't executed like a normal person would have been from doing such horrific things in a period of time like this where execution was very common. Elizabeth actually died in her castle in 1614. Her body was found August 21st, 1614. There's not really word on... How 
long she was dead, if she died that day, whatever. There wasn't really any word about whether or not um, she had died the day she was found or not, or if she had been dead for a while. Um, back then they didn't really have a whole lot of science in technology to kind of determine time of death, so it's kind of fuzzy right there. But um, it is believed that she was at least found on August 21st. Whether she died that day or not, that's the day she was believed to have been found. Now is the portion where we take a little sip of the rumor tea. Mm. Alright, so is this true or false? Well, it's really difficult to tell. Um, my personal opinion, I think that it is true to a certain extent, but I can't speak as to the full extent. Um, and you'll see why in a second. So, um, first things first, apparently 250 out of the 289 witness statements that I mentioned earlier. See, I told you I was going to come back to that. Um, so 250 of them were either hearsay or just nothing. Like, no information that was even remotely relevant. Um, so the amount of witness statements is really... I feel like that number is padded so much because they probably just counted every single person that they asked and not every person that actually gave them information that did any good for the case or bad for the case you know either way anyways so the person who testified about the list of victims you know, you remember I said that uh, somebody said she had written down this list of, like, 600 victims. It's ridiculous. She probably would not have known their names. So stupid. But anyways, apparently that testimony was only a second-hand account from an official who allegedly saw this supposed list but that official himself he never testified he never said shit about it he never confirmed or denied anything so that's shaky at best also also one thing that i feel like will come up a lot whenever i do cases that are this old is that torturing people to get them to tell you what you want to hear is not how you get a confession. We have learned this most of the time. Most people have learned this by now. But it's, it's, it's just really fucking stupid, honestly. That just shows how deep the corruption is within the police department because, like, well, not just the police department, just the whole governmental system um, that would be related to this because you don't just torture people. That's not how you get real answers. Like, I, I, like this, is, this is worse than giving them a truth serum and expecting them to speak truth only because at least then, you know, you might have a chance. I mean, probably not, but... It's a better chance than torturing them. I mean, if somebody's in pain, they're going to say whatever the fuck you want them to say. Because the, if they think that you are going to take them out of pain, it's it's not. It's, it's just no. It's not okay. Anyway, rant over. So along with that, allegedly Elizabeth's son-in-law... He uh, knew about her arrest before it even happened. Like, before Count Two even showed up for the investigation. Allegedly. Allegedly, her son-in-law knew. She didn't. 
the family was working together to conspire against her, according to some people, and they just wanted her money and her stuff. They were like, huh, wonder how we can get rid of her so we can get all of her shit. Killing her would be too much trouble. She's too, she's too powerful. It would be, everybody would be suspicious. Oh, now what if we frame her for an unforgivable crime? And that's what some people believe. That's what some people believe happened. They believe that Elizabeth's family actually worked with the king because, um, well, first off, the king owed Elizabeth debts that he definitely didn't want to pay. What king wants to pay a debt? So, most likely, what happened was that the king didn't want to pay his debts. Elizabeth's family wanted to take over her shit. So they got together in order to conspire and make up the story about Elizabeth being cruel and torturing and murdering people and torturing confessions out of her servants and locking her up in her own damn house, which, I mean, it's not really a huge punishment, but I like being locked in my house, so. And still, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, lots of conspiracy theories going on here. Also, there could have been a political motive because at the time, Elizabeth had been very supportive of her nephew, the one that I mentioned earlier that was the Prince of Transylvania, and he was like a sort of controversial figure at the time. He was having a kind of um, struggle with another family. But anyways, so some of this may have stemmed from, yes, the family wanting to get rid of her so they can take over all her shit. Yes, the king wanting to not have to pay his debts. Probably a little bit political because, I mean, she was a powerful woman back then. That didn't happen <laughs> very much. Allegedly, there is uh, some slight proof, I guess you could say. I wouldn't call it proof. Circumstantial at best. Um, but apparently a priest in 1602 wrote a letter discussing Elizabeth and her husband and their torture of servants. So a lot of people kind of point to that letter and they're like, well, she's probably not innocent. This letter kind of shows, I mean, it's possible he's a priest, but that doesn't really mean anything. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure you can Google and find at least one priest that has done some shady shit. That's all I'm saying, and I will leave that part at that. But the thing is, again, serpent torture was not illegal. It was not. It was not even frowned upon, it was not thought about, it was not cared about. Nobody cared if you tortured your servants or if you killed your servants. You would just get more and be fine and keep going on your merry way. Nobody would give a shit. But the thing is, people cared once the rumors of her torturing noble woman came out. So at least they cared about women. There was that slight silver lining there. They didn't necessarily care about women. They more so cared about them because they were noble. But I personally think that Elizabeth probably did not torture noble women. Unless she was at that point that some killers get to where they kind of want to be caught, they want to be stopped, 
So maybe that is what happened with her. Maybe she did attack noble women because of that. But I don't see really any other reason for her to attack noble women. I do, however, 100% believe that she did torture and most likely murder her servants. Now, I don't know if she tortured all of them. I don't know how many she murdered. I don't know. It's completely unknown. But I do believe that at least the servant part of this story is true. I believe that she did torture them and she did probably kill some. And that's the thing though. Everybody did. Almost every noble treated their servants just horribly. Back then, servants were worthless. They were only worth what they could do in that moment. And if what they can do in that moment is scream in pain, that's what they do. Nobody cared. And it's crazy to think that this is how it was. But at the same time, it's not that crazy. You still see some slight, very toned down parallels between uh, some aspects of this story and some aspects of life now in 2020. This interesting year, and that is the nicest way I can think to put it. This story is crazy. I do believe that she deserved a harsher punishment because she was so cruel and she was pretty much just locked up in her own house, which isn't that bad. I mean, I've been doing it and I'm fine with it, but I'm more of a homebody anyway, so I don't know. According to the law at the time, I don't think that she did anything wrong. Personally, I do not believe that she did torture or harm any of the young noble women that may or may not have gone to her house to learn manners and whatever the fuck else they learn. I don't believe that. Because I believe that Elizabeth is a lot smarter than that. She was super highly educated for this time. And for a woman in this time, she was super fucking smart. Super well educated. She would have known not to go after noble woman unless she was prepared to be caught. Unless she wanted to be caught. And I don't think she did. I really don't think she did. But that is all I have got for you guys today. Um, please make sure to let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think that Elizabeth was a cruel person? Do you think that she murdered and tortured people? Um, do you think it was just the servants, or was it also noble women? Uh, are there any other cases that you would really like to see me cover? Feel free to leave all of that in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Um, please remember, this is my first true crime video, so I'm sorry if it's not the best, but I really wanted to share the story because... It's always fascinated me. So just let me know what you think. How you like it. Um, if there's anything else you want to see on my channel. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. I'll have more videos coming out as soon as possible. Um, I can't promise the schedule right now just because everything's hectic. But I promise I will try my best uh, for now. I will have a link to my blog in the description down below or maybe somewhere if I can figure out how to do that thing where they put the card in there. But yes, I have more true crime cases, um, various 
things related to things like Harry Potter, anime, books, comic books, so on and so forth, all on my blog. It's another little wonderland for me, so it's just a lot of things that I'm really interested in. I will also leave the link to my Instagram in there as well, so you guys can check that out if you like. Um, I'm going to try to post on there as much as I can. Um, I'll always post if I have anything interesting related to this. Also, most importantly, possibly, um, there is my Patreon, which I don't know if I'm going to be able to figure out the card thing. But anyway, so I'll leave my Patreon in the comments below as well. Please give it a look. Um, there's different tiers if you're interested in supporting me. As an artist, I have a variety of things going on. I have a variety of different um, types of things that I will be putting out. So just keep a lookout for that. Um, also, also, don't forget to subscribe and put on those notifications. And like if you like this video. And I will see you wonderfully spooky and mad people later.